Whenever you go onto any of the distro specific forums, there's always going to be a couple of people asking the exact same sort of questions. Now these people might be new to Linux or just new to the distro in general, but you'll always see these questions. And that is, I want to learn how to use Arch Linux, Ubuntu, Mint. How do I use these distros? And I understand the idea of the question. Like you want to know how to use the operating system you've just installed. But the problem that I have with asking this question is it ends up leading you down a route where you don't really get useful answers because the question frankly doesn't mean anything. Because basically what it's doing is sort of misunderstanding what a distro actually is and treating it like it's a whole separate operating system. Now there are two obvious exceptions, those being Android and Chrome OS, which at this point are so far removed from being Linux that it is very easy to call them a whole separate operating system, especially in the case of Chrome OS, which even though it is based on Gen 2, most people don't even realize that because of how different from Gen 2 it actually is. I would also like to include distros which, while still very much being Linux, are very different from the way that Linux typically works. Things like, say, Gen 2, which is a source-based distro, whereas most distros out there are binary-based, and because it's source-based, there is a lot of things specific to Gen 2 you won't see on those other distros. Or, say, NixOS, which its way of doing package management is so different from every other distro, I think that question actually becomes useful. Obviously, Bedrock Linux, which you can install any package manager you want on it, and for obvious reasons, Linux from scratch as well. And there are a couple of other examples, but just keep those examples as being the weird distros. I don't mean things like Pop OS. I don't mean things like Mint, Manjaro, Arch Linux, uh, Debian, things like that. Things that work the way that most Linux distros typically work. Because for the most part, Linux distros frankly, are not real. There are a set of defaults that come with the ISO, and that's about it. If we take something like Arch Linux and Ubuntu, while these might seem like very different distros, if we actually break it down, what's actually different about them? On Arch, you have Pac-Man. On Ubuntu, you have Apt. For the graphical environment, on Arch, you start with None. On Ubuntu, you get Gnome. For the backend software, maybe you have a different audio server, a different boot manager, a different display manager. For the pre-installed general user software, you have a different terminal, browser, file manager, editor. Maybe your system configuration, your fonts will be different, and the documentation will be different. But the part that's actually important, the Linux kernel is the same thing. Maybe there'll be some minor tweaks for the Ubuntu kernel and the Arch kernel, but if you swap those kernels around, everything will continue to work just fine. And then you take everything you have installed on Arch and everything you have installed on Ubuntu and you swap those around as well. So now you have an Ubuntu system that is basically running Arch Linux and you have an Arch Linux system that is basically running Ubuntu. And it's going to keep working because these are the exact same operating systems. A distro is just a set of defaults. Now, obviously, most people using Linux probably are not going to be doing that. That's not to say that distro maintainers don't do a lot of work. I'm not trying to discredit that at all. Obviously, making this swap would be a lot of extra work. But what it does illustrate is that a distro isn't actually a real construct. Basically, it's just a way that Linux comes to you in a pre-configured state. Now, I love the fact there are distros out there where you can just install Linux, have a perfectly working graphical environment in a couple of minutes, and not really have to think about anything. You could go and install something like Manjaro and get yourself KDE working. You can install Ubuntu and have GNOME working, and you don't have to go and really set up anything yourself. But what this does come with is the same sort of problem I was talking about earlier, where you get people asking questions that don't really make any sense. One question I've seen is, how do I set my terminal font on Manjaro? Now, that question has a lot of different ways it can be answered, and we don't have any context from that question. Do you mean, how do I change my font in KDE, and that's going to modify the font in my terminal? Or are you using a different terminal from the one that comes built in with KDE? Maybe you're using Alacrity. That question by itself cannot be answered and won't give you a good answer.
I know this is going to be a big hurdle for new users to try to get over, but this is part of the reason why people have this idea of Linux forums being this hostile place. If you go into a Linux forum knowing literally nothing about your system, no one there is actually going to be able to help you. Sure, knowing what distro you're running is going to be able to give people the idea of what you might be running, but might is the best they can possibly come up with. If you want to get a proper answer from these places, please try to find out something about your system. If you want to know, say, how to change your terminal font, find out what terminal you're actually running on your system. If you haven't gone and modified anything, it's probably going to be the default that comes with your desktop environment. I think providing some sort of basic information about what problem you're having and what you're having that problem with is the absolute minimum that can be expected from someone trying to receive help from others. And if you have no idea what came installed with your desktop environment, you could always go and ask that question instead. If you don't know what text editor comes with, say, GNOME, because let's say on your distro they just changed the name of it to text editor, you could always go and ask that question. Now, over on the Windows and Mac OS side, I think asking a question, how do I use Windows? I want to learn Windows. Can you provide a resource on how to do so? And the exact same over on Mac OS. I think this is a very, very different question because on those operating systems, there are parts of the OS that fundamentally can't be changed because of how locked down they actually are. If we take something like Windows 10, there's obviously going to be the educational version, the home version, the pro version, and they're going to have some like slight differences between them but fundamentally they're all the exact same thing maybe they'll have some like different ram restrictions things like that but it's not like you have a windows a gindos an arch windows a, a windows where they're the same operating system, but every program you have installed is very different. Windows 10 will always be Windows 10. And if you take something like Windows 7, that is a completely different operating system than Windows 10. It's not like we could take like the Windows 10 kernel, stick it on Windows 7 and like swap in all the drivers. Theoretically, that would be possible. But because of how locked down it is, you have to treat these as completely separate entities. And I think this is the difference between a distribution of an OS and a completely different OS. All of these distributions of Linux are still fundamentally Linux. There's nothing about them that stops you from just swapping stuff in between them and having it work perfectly fine. But if you take Windows and you take Mac OS, there's no world where you can say that you can just take Windows software, stick it on Mac OS, and it will just work. That just isn't how they function, they are completely different systems. Now rather than looking at Linux as a individual set of distributions, what if we look at it as a whole operating system? Rather than making a distinction between Arch and Ubuntu, we all just say, they're just all Linux, it's perfectly fine. Now, technically Linux doesn't mean the OS. It means the kernel, but most people when they're talking about Linux refer to it as an operating system. So that's how I'm going to refer to it. Now, when someone says, I would like to learn Linux, do you have any resources on how to learn Linux? While this might not be completely accurate, usually you can give a fairly good answer to this question because what they probably mean is I would like to learn how to use a terminal, I would like to learn how to use the core utils, typically that's going to mean the GNU core utils because that's what's installed on most Linux systems. Yes, there are other implementations and you don't need the GNU core utils on your system. You could go and install say an implementation that directly follows the POSIX spec for example, but most people aren't going to go out of their way to search for those packages or to search for a distribution that doesn't ship with GNU. It's basically expected that if you're running Linux, you probably have the GNU core utils installed. And especially so if you're asking this question, because any person who is new to Linux asking this question is almost guaranteed to be using a distro that ships with GNU tools. They're probably not going out of their way to find something different. Now, is this entire video just me being incredibly pedantic? Yeah, it kind of is. But I think I'm being pedantic for a very good reason. Because if you're a new Linux user, you probably don't know the questions you want to ask to know the things that you want to know. And you probably don't even know what things you don't know to know what questions you should be trying to work out to know the things that you want to know. I think I went in a circle there. Doesn't matter. But I think it makes sense to spend some time 
actually explaining sort of why distros don't actually matter and instead what actually matters on your system is the tools you're actually running. If there is anything you take away from this video, the most important thing to get answers about the things you want to know is knowing what software you actually have installed on your system. And the language you use to describe that isn't always there to describe it in the most accurate way. Sure, we could explain every single individual thing about our Linux system and that we're not actually running Linux, we're actually running the Linux kernel plus GNU, but ultimately it doesn't actually matter. The thing that's actually important there is conveying the meaning of what you want to know. This will help you get better answers, it'll save your time, and it'll help people who are actually trying to help you give you those better answers. And I think that's the most important thing here. I think that's everything for me, and before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Donald, Logan Michael, Andrew Mitchell, Nathan, David, Carl, Will, Brennan, Chica Bento, Jamie Joseph, Josh, Michael, Peter D. Stephen T. through Tony Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go and support my work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, start, leave a that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays where I live stream twice a week and upload about five or so YouTube shorts and this channel is available over on Odyssey. That's it for me and I'm out.